So we're going to be doing a STEM activity, which is connecting what we've been learning uh, the last couple weeks on tectonic plates. And then they're going to take that and apply it to what civil engineers do um, in order to build like, you know, infrastructures, bridges, buildings, and why they design them the way they do, taking into account what happens with plate tectonics. You want a building that's going to be able to withstand an earthquake. Okay, so what can you do using these materials? But in between, that's six. And there's one, two, nine. And it's going to have four things on each side. What do you need? And then, like, place it over. Yeah. And make a... Do you open up the straw? Like, all the way? No, just like this. And then we can take it with the air. We're building the paper clips. That way we can put them on the index cards and keep them there. And so we're gonna, that's gonna hold up the straws and... So they're gonna think about, okay, with transform boundaries, we know earthquakes could cause, you know, cracks and things and foundations, so how could they stabilize their own buildings um, to, in order to prevent them from, like, crumbling under these tectonic plates? We need, no, that's gonna make the wind blow over. It's gonna be whole. Five, five, five additional minutes. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But I'm gonna give them index cards, straws, they're gonna have paper clips, and then they're gonna design their own building. And because these are gifted students, I don't want to put them inside of a little box. They're gonna build whatever building they see fit in order to withstand this earthquake. Anytime we do STEM activities, it's something that's hands-on. So it takes like a conc uh, something that's abstract to the kids and it makes it more concrete. So, you know, they're hearing about tectonic plates and they know it causes earthquakes and things like that. But here in McAllen, we don't really experience those things, right? So when we do these STEM activities, they can take this abstract idea and make it more concrete where they can say, oh, okay, this is what a civil engineer does and this is why they do it and this is what happens if an earthquake occurs. So it kind of makes it just more concrete for them. But it's not really boss. No. It's Caleb. It's Caleb. It's Caleb. Caleb. Oh, what? I didn't do it. Okay, wait. Wait. I have like. Oh, come on. It's not gonna fall. You just have to take this on. Or like. You don't forget this. It's not gonna be as tall as the last one. Yeah. It's my homeboy over here. You have to record your results. We're gonna be recording data. Now on each table, if you look, I placed a piece of graph paper. And I'm just going to drop the book and we're going to see what happens to their building, okay? Countdown. Three, two, one. 36! What do you think? Woo! Did it move at all? No. Okay, let's see what happens here. What do you guys predict is going to happen? It's going to be awesome. All right, let's find out. Three, two, one. A marble fell. Okay, what do you notice about the building, though? It's shaking. It's shaking back and forth. So would this be a good structural? No, no. no why not? <laughs> yeah, it's, if, if this was a real life structure, guys, okay, and the building was shaking like that, what, would, what do you guys predict would happen? Three, two, one. Okay, so what do we notice about this one? It's shaking again. It's shaking again. However, did it fall? Did it crumble? No. No. So what would the Richter scale be here more or less for the earthquake? Maybe a four? Okay. A two, something smaller, because right because it's sending a small vibration. So let's see how this building does. Three, two, one. Oh! <laughs> okay. Yes. Yes, our book fell apart, but look what happened. It moved immensely. Okay, so this one's wider, right? And that one was more like a pyramid. Let's see, let's compare the difference and hopefully my book doesn't um, fall apart again. All right, ready? Three, two, one. What happened? It moved slightly. Do you notice that? It did move slightly, okay? Barely. Three, two, one. Nothing, right? Amazing. And you know what's cool about technology, like doing that slow motion? We can totally see that it didn't move at all, right? Caleb, what did you hypothesize, Caleb? Uh, yeah,
Okay, you think it might fall over because it's, the wind's gonna blow on it, right? Okay, let's find out. Okay, three, two, one. Oh, Okay, it did rattle a little bit, right? Okay, good job. Yeah, it's only because it's out of balance. Okay. That's out of balance, it's fine. Recently, some new buildings have been constructed on rubber mountings that absorb the shock waves. So their civil engineers, they start thinking about those things and they make modifications. Well, the reason why we designed it is because we wanted to make it like aerodynamic. Is we thought the teacher would put it this way to where the book would push that way so the wind goes to here. But since Caden came up with an idea to make it this way, it basically gets pushed, but it does wobble a little. It's because she just wanted to make it aerodynamic. We put this design together because we learned that the square base is like stronger because if it's it has more balance and we put it straight up because if it's square and like all, if it's all the same size around, then it'll have more balance because if it's like a peak, then it will um, like, it won't have balance. I just enjoyed that they got to, you know, get like a real world application to what we learned on tectonic plates and to kind of take a day in the life of a civil engineer and, you know, design their own building and just be able to apply what we learned in the classroom and make it real for them and I think that they enjoyed it.